you. Um, the strategy is it? Can you hear me? Um, yeah, so this morning um, is focused, this session is focused on um, how to work together to implement Zooms. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a um, strategic plan that we have in place and how that was developed. And it's um, programmatic. So hold on to your coffee and be ready for some programmatic language. Uh, but basically what we want is your help uh, to work within this strategic plan to develop two types of grassroots efforts. Uh, the first is community working groups focused on developing regional uh, collaboration. Uh, and the second is uh, working groups focused on developing technological capabilities. Um, and we are all here because we are scientists, so we are all interested in one little bit of this overarching science goal. Uh, and when we address that, we measure our little bit here. But the goal, we all recognize this goal to get a more overarching observation system in place. But when we work as individual scientists, uh, we think about our individual science goals, uh, and we fill in gaps in this observation system wherever they happen to fit our goals. And the difference now when we are working together as a, in a coordinated effort is um, that the observing system is the goal. Uh, and we can actually have a coherent plan how to achieve it, and that will avoid double work, and it will help us to leverage resources, resources and we will have all the benefits of moving uh, along together globally. And the difference between these two ways of approaching is um, that we can have an overarching plan, and the first step, step in that is the uh, strategic plan. That one will send, then lead to an operational plan and a financial plan so that you can break it all up into little bits and make sure that we approach, that we achieve the big goal, even if we're only doing a small part. Uh, so SUS has developed a strategic plan. Uh, it's written in a project management language. I'm not so, or was not so familiar with it, so I tend to tended to fall asleep, but I, it's quite interesting, actually, <laughs> once you get into it. I think, yeah, okay, it's not as nice as on Oscar helped me to develop this. It looked like Star Wars theme in the background. But this is the um, mission. You have a mission and a vision and a statement, and we went through all that yesterday, so I think we are all on the same page of what the goal here is. Um, And you can read them in the, the strategic plan is on uh, Sue's web page. It's a draft plan. It was uh, approved as a working document by the steering committee, but it, it will be sent out for wider review to you and all other. Sorry? Okay. Yeah, sorry. No, yeah, of course it should be, but you will see it when you are asked to provide input on it. Yeah. But we are working along. We think it's good enough to work along on our... Uh, anyway, so this strategic plan should uh, outline basically what SUS should do and also what SUS, hence what SUS should not do. So it's kind of setting up the boundaries, which we really need. And it also tells us how we measure progress. You're applauding. Is there some... Uh, are you cold? Uh, or, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> or are you just trying... It was very enthusiastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the wave. Can we have the wave? Yeah. Um, so anyway, how to measure progress? Because we need that in order to see if something is not working. If we're doing something and we don't make progress, we should stop doing that and start doing something else instead. So everything that SUS does should be in this plan. 
everything that we think zoos should do must be in there. Otherwise, we will not move towards that. Uh, and this plan, like I said, it will be sent out for a wider review. It, it will be used to show us uh, what the objectives are, where to direct funding, um, and time. Strange sentence. Uh, uh, it, it will help us to judge if we are moving towards the goals, uh, are we achieving the objectives, help us to prioritize activities, help to keep everyone to keep the longer term and broader scale perspective. Uh, and it helps us by breaking up it, in, it up into smaller pieces. And it's really critical to have this because the program office is limited uh, by personnel and the scientists who, who will be doing most of the work are volunteers. Um, so given the large things to be done, uh, this goal, much of this goal has been focused on how to ex expand the number of scientists that are involved. Uh, but at the same time, keeping the large goal in focus. Uh, and this, uh, the strategic plan that you will see soon uh, is, uh, was created, and you, there are tools for doing this. It was used, the Civicus uh, tool was used for this one. There are others. Uh, if you look it online, you can read much more about it. This is step by step how you create a strategic plan for a... Um, non-profit organization. Uh, and so we have been organizing for one part is problem identification, and then that will give us the overall goals and the immediate objectives, things that need to be done. Uh, and problem identification, and an example is there were two big problems here. The first one is that Southern Ocean observations are limited in space, time, quality and variables measured. Uh, and the reason for that is that we are uncoordinated. It's short term because we rely on national funding and that's always three or four years maximum. Uh, there are single nations, single discipline approach to observation, which leaves gaps in the observation system. Uh, there is not, no, not enough internationally agreed optimal sampling no big strategy has been developed. Um, and there is lack, a big lack of continuous funding for sustained observations, uh, which leaves uh, gaps in the time. Um, and this uh, problem, and these reasons for the problem, leads us to the overall goal. The first overall goal is a coherent sampling of the Southern Ocean. Uh, and that is done by, instead of having these uncoordinated efforts, we have integrated sampling, standardized sampling, open access to data, and uh, leveraged collaboration. W one example is um, future regions. Um, you might, uh, Oscar, what exactly was I supposed to say here? He updated the slides for me. Well, it was just that the idea is like, if these, these, we need a unified measurement, so if you look at the Western Arctic, there's something like 25 field stations from different countries, and we don't even have a list of what's being measured in each station and what methods they're using. And so we need to first get the list, and then at that point, we need to start standardizing it so it's useful to the broader climate community, ocean community, policy. Um. Yeah. So the immediate, that's the immediate objective. So develop a coherent list of what is measured, how it's measured, and where, where is the data. Uh, and we will do this by forming uh, SUS working groups, uh, which are grassroots focused community efforts with a specific goal. Um, and the steer, scientific steering committee of SUS will help these uh, grassroots communities with with coordination and with directing the rest of the community to this group. Uh, and one way to get started with working group is, uh, like Mike was doing, to review what is currently done and to assess the state of the ocean for this region using all available data. And it, that is a surprisingly big effort, actually. Um, 
And, and go, yeah, going back to the West Antarctic, uh, the, an example of what they have done is uh, they have drafted in the terms of reference for this working group. And there's a proposal submitted to the Royal Society for an international meeting for researchers interested in working in this region. Uh, yeah, and again, Oscar has been here. <laughs> what exactly was I supposed to say here? <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's like part of what we're doing this afternoon is we're going to have all these working groups. And the working groups can be technology-focused. The technology here could be AUVs. It could be models. It could be uh, web-based services. There could be working groups based on what should we measure, so that's what we're going to talk about after the coffee break, the essential of some variables. There could be process working groups, designing a flagship program to go look at the collapse in the West Antarctic Ice Sheet. Or they could be regional, like the West Antarctic. So and I put superheroes here because hopefully they self-organize and that um, you know, they're the true sort of soldier of the suits because they're doing it because it'll benefit. Nicely put. Yep. Um, I had wine. So, next session, we will go through all this detail. I, I wanted to give an overview. So, given a community of working groups, uh, how do we standardize these efforts? There, there are six. Um, ways to accomplish this. The first is design of the system, define essential variables, sampling requirements, etc. The second is capabilities, national and international progress that projects that focus on different aspects, aspects of the technological advances. Uh, priority requirements for advances in observation technology are identified and articulated. And the third is uh, observations, methodologies, information on international standards, and so on. Uh, and when there are, where there are no standards to develop them. Uh, it will all become clear as the day progresses. Uh, and then there is regional... I really did offer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, am I sweating? Yeah. <laughs> She asked for my help. I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> there is a picture of a rave party. And on the other side, there is coordination between working groups and task forces. <laughs> no, so, okay. So the idea is that we're going to have these working groups that are going to be specialized. And so then how do we essentially get them coordinated so that we don't have now six working groups going their own direction and then there's no coordination. And so the working groups will be organized around chairs or leaders that hopefully are going to go corral the community. And we're all getting cool black light hand stamps. You're getting hand stamps. <laughs> you should see the session we have planned for tonight. So, um, and then uh, that group will probably come together at various points along with like the science steering committee to essentially then unify the messaging and all that between them. And they'll be also working with our totally awesome data group, um, which is already sort of cutting across a lot of the international data agencies and data centers. And there's a dedicated data person, Steve Diggs will sort of outline all that later, uh, pick who's joined um, to essentially coordinate all that. Do you want to say something more? No. Um, anyway, so what to do during this workshop is that essentially to tell us how we move forward in the strategic plan, uh, which is called implementation in this strategic language I learned. Uh, so, and it means that what, given what you want, uh, desire and dream, you, you should provide that as input. We need your input today during the breakout sessions. Uh, first, to develop these working groups. Uh, and working groups should be long term. Uh, they should be working with strategy, long term working with strategy. Um, for example, all the research taking place in an 
in a region or under ice technology or something. They are for to exist as long as zoos exist, basically. Uh, then we also need input on refining the EUVs, which will be explained very soon. Uh, and I just want to... There, there's also mention of task teams, and there's a difference. Working groups are long-term work with strategy. Task teams is something that produce a product. So the lifetime of the task team is only... So, for example, um, the Ross Sea gap identification, that was a task team. There was a need for this product identify the gaps in the Rossi, and it was done, and then the task team is dissolved. Um, so if you have an idea for something that should be addressed by a task team, uh, that's, feel free to bring it up too. But most of the input will be for working groups. Um, uh, and the way you can think about these working groups, they have different dimensions. It's regional, they can be regional, and they can be focused on capability. So you can think of it as a matrix. And all the, so the capability can be, for example, under ice or development of cheap technology used for uh, ships of opportunity, from ships of opportunity or satellite validation or EUV, EUVs. That uh, could be a working group. Uh, and on the other um, dimension, you have regions. And the goal is sort of to populate this matrix everywhere. Uh, and part of the work will be to judge where every region is with regard to all these capabilities uh, and, and identify what steps need to be taken in order to make that dot in the matrix move along. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, questions? We are supposed to have a discussion here now, I think. <laughs> I think one thing before we, before we break for coffee or tea, um, we have ideas of what might be good working groups, but obviously we did, didn't know the cross-section of people who are going to be here. And so one thing that might be useful is for people to maybe think about what might be a good working group. And again, the rules for a working group are that it's going to be international in scope and that it is likely going to be sort of a strategic discussion and effort that goes on for more than a year. It's more than just producing a report. If you're sitting around and you're thinking about what we really need is a shorter term thing, you should tell us what that is and we can try to find the right people to coordinate doing the, the short-term thing. And again, what working groups might be, it could be regionally focused, um, it can be focused around technology development, technology sharing. Some of us last evening were talking about sensor integration on a range of platforms and that can be unified across all kinds of AUVs. Um, it can be process related, it can be a campaign <clears throat> science need, you know, the cotton ice sheets and everything have come up in a bunch of the examples and, you know, how can we coordinate a larger effort and maximize on that, that you know, it can be process oriented um, on support, mobility. Yeah, yeah so anything, think. feel free. Don't let us, uh, we, we really want input. We, we are a bit worried that we are getting stuck, a small group of people in our fort, so we would really like. So if you think input. about that and maybe um, we'll put some paper out and you can write them down. And then what we would like to do in those breakout groups, one idea is we wanted to mix, mix it up so that it, you know, we have a bunch of good friends, they just don't go retreat to a small room by themselves and have their own discussion they've already been having. So we'll probably randomize sort of the cross-sections of the different groups, one just to get cross-talk going. Um, but we, we want as much feedback about what those groups might be. Um, obviously, some of the regional stuff will be heavily weighted to who we have in the room here. So the Indian sector would be well represented uh, by that but uh, we really want people to think about that and to be creative in what they think we should focus on.
the num total number of working groups could be maybe between six and ten, something like that, including regional and capabilities. Steve, uh, can you give an example of the, the past team, for example, uh, relative to that? I think we had a couple there, but the, you know, yeah, there maybe a couple. Yeah, so some another example of a task team was the. Uh, the remote sensing, uh, we, we got approached by some remote sensing agency asking what remote sensing is needed in the Southern Ocean. And the goal then was to produce, uh, examine what, what everyone needs and produce. So we could have, for example, a uh, tasking on uh, algorithm development for remote sensing. Sorry, algorithm development. For remote sensing. Yeah, a, a specific. I think it needs to be um, if there, if it's a product coming out and the work is finished after that product comes out, then it's a task team. I've been thinking like a task team, like finishing a year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it might be making an inventory of what the algorithms are and what the inventory might have is here are the algorithms we use for sea ice. Here are the limitations of the various algorithms, and so the product might be that table that's available. But developing a new algorithm for a new splice platform, that could be a working group potentially because that's a longer term effort to or uh, rather developing algorithms for if it's a that would be an ongoing work. That that would be a, I think. But developing an algorithm for a specific that would be finished when that is done, I think. So that would be a task team. But a more general, bigger would be a working group. That's how I think. And uh, 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 there are um, steering committee members spread out here in the room, and everyone is on the same page. So you can just approach any of them, uh, including Steve. <laughs> mm? Yeah. Um, so maybe I was applauding earlier. Ah, uh, good. <laughs> This slide, but the the hook in SUS. So SUS is all about observation. I get that entirely. But the hook I was thinking about was where that interacts with the you know, coastal or the modeling community. Or so that's so that's one thing to keep in mind. The question is just to know where mm. SUS. Mm -hmm. the observation and uh, kind of test the observation against the model. Yeah, I think that's a... Personally, I think that's an excellent suggestion for a working group, mo mod regional model or real modeling. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so suggest that uh, right. in the small group that you are randomly divided into. <laughs> I think we found a co chair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you have to be a bit careful here. When you raise your voice, you're steam. something that says this is what we've done 
And this is how much we've done of what we need to do. One of the things that came up in early SUS or pre SUS meetings, uh, this is almost the end of the first decade of uh, SUS, um, was for the for the global ocean observing system, there were a number of targets, quantitative targets of we need this many floats, we need this many sections, blah, blah, blah. And so you could plot a map and you could say, well, we're, we're two thirds of the way there for this, or we're only a third of the way there for this version, for this measurement. And I'm told, at least within the Goose community, that that was really effective for securing funding to fill those gaps. Whereas we don't. Yesterday we articulated lots of gaps, but we haven't really got the quantitative done. But it's still sort of fuzzy. So I wonder if that's, um, I think for SUS to have a, a future and continue to expand, we need to do that. Mm -hmm. And whether that's a task team, a working group, a mm -hmm. uh, science steering team job, I'm not sure. It's definitely not Louise's job. <laughs> so it's metrics of success. It, yeah, so it's, and it's defining those and then quantifying how close you are to getting there. So the, you know, the Argo community has an overall target for global Argo. There's some science to be done to say whether that's the right number for the Southern Ocean Down for us. But even taking that as the number, it would be nice to have on the Zeus website this is how many, mm. this mm. is what we've done. This, these are the sections. Yep. I think that would really help convey to the community this there's some real momentum. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I totally agree. I, I think it will be the, the first step I really think was to get the strategic plan in place and it's not really there. It hasn't been uh, re reviewed yet. But in there there are broad goals that can be checked off. But they need to be divided into quantitative things. And you're doing that work with EUVs, for example, that will always, what to measure, how often, how many floats. And uh, that can be, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right about that. It, it will be very effective. And there are tools to do this from the data subcommittee also. Thanks. Yeah, Andrew. taken a while to spin up the, the data interface and, uh, and so on, but I don't think you need to necessarily wait for that to be able to do this job. What would be really good is to identify those um, uh, other groups that have been doing things, but also that we've been developing our capability here, and to have people tasked at the end of this workshop to go away and do that. And it may be one or two people, or it may be a group, or it may be developing a direct link with an organisation that's already doing it. But then to report on the gaps and so on, I think that would be a really good thing to get out of this group. Of. We have a process by which that would be done when people uh, are <coughs> least oriented towards the big And that's been one of the hard parts, is to get an engagement, particularly with a cross-border <coughs> community and with other groups. So we can get this done quickly and easily without having a, a high administrative burden, which always ends up with work. Mm. Yep. Just following on from that, do we, for the uh, networks that are part of JCOM, so GoShift, Argo, SIS, et cetera, we, we have the JCOM office, and that's exactly where the role is. And so um, there are technical coordinators that are funded by the program. <laughs> it's just the technical support for JCOM Ops that would be great, but there are technical coordinators there that team of them. But if this comes up with metrics harvest from the real time data for each station, we do so on a monthly basis. And in fact, right now they're going through a whole uh, another uh, increment of their entire machinery and website, and so this is a great opportunity to feed into them whatever metrics you want to uh, to uh, feed back. Mm, great. Thanks. Um, 
Yeah. So, uh, uh, maybe you're all a bit jet lagged. Many of you are a bit jet lagged and tired. So, but uh, so don't panic. I think it will be much clearer after the next session what we will do, and you will be briefed before we break out into the groups. Okay. Um, now we are ahead of schedule, I think. Yeah. Shall we still break for coffee or? Yeah, half an hour. Yep. Mm, excellent. So we have a bit longer coffee. I'm, I don't remember. Is it? Ele we reconvene at 11. Yeah. Right. So what we'll do is we'll put uh, on this front table here a series of paper and uh, pencils. And then if people have some good ideas, jot those down on a piece of paper so we can collate those. And then we'll use that for a basis for potential groups in the afternoon. Next to the idea, maybe put your name so we know <laughs> who, who will be, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or the name of someone else. Yeah. <laughs> I've been putting Anna's name next to all my work. <laughs> yeah. And I'll delete, I'll put rave pictures. <laughs> okay, see you at 11, back here.